Hello and welcome back to part 7 of the online exam system tutorial using csharp.net and BC Technologies. My name is Nelvin Amos again and um, right in the previous video if you follow through we discussed about uh, how we can create the models, how we can create the page, everything about the server and everything about the design of the page is ready. We were also able to save the answer that the user submitted. So in this video the only thing pending which is probably the last item in this page is creating a javascript timer like a tiktok tiktok timer right so the timer tiktok 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 okay so that's what we're gonna try to create a, a timer that counts down until the very last second and then it should tell the user hey your time's up you have to give up the exam regardless whether you finish or not so that's what we're gonna try to do so let's get started so let's begin by creating a sample variable. Let's say we have a timer that is going to expire 65 seconds from now. What do we do? End time equals date time dot now, which is now dot add seconds. Let's say 65 seconds from now. Okay. So what's the time remaining? Time remaining will be calculated based off the end time dot ticks minus that time dot UTC now dot ticks. This difference will give us the total seconds remaining. That will be from the time spent class from ticks. And let's get the total seconds. This will give us the total time remaining in this hole between these two. Now, we already have uh, two elements here, span, both sec remaining and min remaining. And we are going to populate these uh, elements with the correct values. Let's start by adding a JavaScript function. Function start tick. And let's not forget to call this when the page starts itself. And we will populate document.getElement by ID sec remaining dot inner text, which is span. So we can use inner text is time remaining all right so let's see what we have here let's refresh the page so the 65 remaining but this is really not what we wanted to do um, 65 seconds must be actually one minute five seconds before we go on let's first of all create a timer that can help us in the ticking so let's declare a variable called tick equal to set interval this is an inbuilt method for javascript for timer and this will be the function that will get executed every time it ticks at an interval of a thousand milliseconds which is one second what do we want it to do we want it to decrement or decrease decrement this value one at a time uh, but this is a server variable we cannot do anything so we have to have a javascript variable let's say remaining seconds equal to time remaining and I will use the same thing here now. Remaining seconds. Okay. And this is what I wanted to keep reducing it. Remaining seconds equal to remaining seconds minus one. And I also wanted to keep on updating this value every time I reduce it. Let's see. Okay. So we got it. So everything's decrementing it which is working as planned, but we have 59, 58. So now let's work into this minute and the second bit of this. So for this one, we have to have something that tells us that, okay, this is the time to have this, the server reduced. We can do it that way, or we can simply do one thing, which is variable seconds counter so this counter will be used to determine whether uh, you know it's time to reduce the minute counter or not because we know 60 seconds are there in a minute so once we hit 60 mark or once the counter comes down to zero we reduce the minute so um, let's do it this way variable seconds counter equals 60 because 60 seconds is one minute but in this scenario because it is 65 right 5 is the seconds remaining, not 65, because 60, 
60 plus 5. 60 is 1 minute and 5 is the seconds remaining. So how do we get 5 here? We have to mod by 5. 60. And this section will be the remaining seconds. Alright, so the total 65 mod 60 will give us 5. So, now, every time the server ticks, we reduce the total time remaining, plus we also reduce the seconds remaining until the next minute decreases. So what we'll do is seconds counter minus 1. So every time we have a seconds, now we no longer update the seconds with the minutes remainder, we will update with the seconds counter. How many seconds are remaining? Okay? And every time there is a reduction, we have to also check if we have to also reduce the minute. So before that, let's see what we have here. Whether it's working right or not. So we have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And it gets negative. Doesn't look right. Plus we don't have the, the minute section of it. So let's add that. Let's do it. Minute. Now we have minute section. This will no longer be the seconds. This will be remaining seconds divided by 60. All right, because the, the this will be the minute section of it. The same thing, every time it ticks, we have to make sure that we updated the time. Let's see. Since we got it right, one, two, one, zero, zero, nine. Okay, so the ticks are everything good, except that we have to display this in the form of an integer, not as a decimal value. So we have to do a JavaScript function, which is parse int. This should do the trick for us. And this should do the trick for us now. Okay, the other thing that we see is this is decrementing in the form of negative, negative 24, negative 23. We do not want that. Once it reaches zero, we have to reset it back to 60. So if seconds counter equals zero, seconds counter equals 60. Now let's see. Right, five, four, three, two, one, zero, fifty-nine. Whoa! Absolutely looking good. So what do we have here? We have minutes remaining seconds, seconds counter, and every time we decrease it, we recalculate the value remaining, and then we introduce this. So I think everything's good now. So what do we have next? The only thing that I do not want to do here is this is zero, and we really do not want to represent a single value here. So let's format this a little bit so that it looks stylish. So let's introduce function format number. Let's accept some numbers here. So let's check if the number is less than 10, then we need to return a zero plus the number. So we're just adding some value in front. Otherwise, simply return so that we don't have a problem. Let's put a space character plus number. And then all of this method that we're calling has to go through this so that it gets properly formatted. All right. So it goes like this. This whole thing has to come inside and let's see what happens now. One, zero, 59. Wow, this looks great. So everything's working now. So we just have to have the very final touch. So now we know that everything's working fine. But then where do we stop? We stop here. We have to check if remaining seconds, as long as there is some sec seconds remaining, we do all of these things. All right, we do all of these things as long as there is at least one second remaining. Otherwise, we stop by doing clear interval by giving a handle, which is the handle that we already declared here. And then we also wanted to alert to the user saying something like, um, your test, your exam time has 
expired. So now let's see, we're going to have to wait for a minute or so to look at what happens. Do 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 four three two one zero fifty nine. Everything looks good so far. Let's see if we miss anything here or revise something. Timer initiated, seconds initiated with the exact value. Initially, we update the minute and the seconds, and then every time it ticks, we update the seconds and the minute remaining. We keep reducing it and resetting the timer to the seconds to sixty every time it comes down to zero and whenever the the total remaining seconds is the last second then we come to clear interval setting the exam time expired so we still got 21 seconds in the server running we have to check and ensure if everything is good yes everything looks good and okay Three, two, one, zero. Poofs. All right, so your exam time has expired. Your tutorial has ended. This video session can end. Hooray. So um, there we go. We have uh, done a lot of things. Now, the only thing that we have to do now is this is a virtual time. We set a 65 seconds. So what do we have to do? We have to get this from the server or from the database or from wherever to make sure we got it right. So while we were uh, preparing the video, I've added one more variable, which was not part of the tutorial that we have in the previous videos. Just this line, a view back dot time expire, which is again coming from the registration entity that we already have. And the token expire time is already created at the time of registration. You know that when user register it, we already have, uh, we already estimate when it will expire, right? So we're just storing this value in a view back. We also have this in a session, but I thought we'll just use view back. You can use session or view back any way you prefer. So the only thing that is remaining here is to use this one here. View back dot time expire. But Razor will not know whether it's a date time object or anything. So let's make sure we tell him or we tell Razor that this is a date time object. Everything should be good. Let's check it out. Oops, really sorry. We have an exam that has already expired in reality. Oops, looks good. But again, yes. So this is the, the problem with reality. So in reality, everything becomes decimal values. So I think we can fix this by adding um, taking only the value of the data, not the decimal point. Let's try. All right, so it's working and it's good to see everything's uh, as planned. It's exactly the same as the reference uh, website that we have. So the JavaScript's time we're running, the test code we're working, saving, showing questions exactly the way they were designed. The only thing pending that I see here are uh, the, the control panel for putting in these questions and the answers, right? So I will not try to discuss this in this video, but if, should there be anyone who is interested for it, please put down your comments or ask them through comments and I'll try to create one for you or probably send you the code if you need to. Um, I enjoy, you know, learning together, so I hope if you like this, please comment or like the video, and hope to see you in the next videos ahead. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.